The first time that you run NEM analysis, you'll be greeted by a welcome window. Simply click OK to open a new finder window and select the location of your NEM Acquire files. I have a folder already prepared called NEM Acquire Recordings on my desktop. I'll pick that folder and select Choose to load it. The files that are valid NEM analysis files are loaded into the left panel where all the files are listed. At the very top, you'll see the folder that you've selected. You can simply click on a file once to start loading it. At the very bottom here, you'll see some status text showing you how close to completion the file analysis is and the estimated time remaining until it's finished. This is a good time to explain the anatomy of a pump. All of these events here are pumps. A pump is defined as an event that starts with a positive E spike, an excitation spike, and ends with a negative R spike or relaxation spike. In this recording, you can see that the E spikes are positive and the R spikes are negative. It's important that the orientation is correct in order for the analysis to be accurate. To check this, I recommend finding a spot in your recordings where there's a gap between pumps. The very first event you see should be positive. If it's negative, like this, you should change your orientation. By default, NEM analysis sees the worms as head first in the chip. You can set the orientation when taking recordings in NEM Acquire. If you've forgotten to do this, or if the orientation is inaccurate, it's very easy to fix. All you need to do is go to View Recording Notes, and a new dialog will open. You can see the orientation field right here. In fact, this researcher specified that when the recording was taken, the worm was tail first in the chip. If you need to change this value, simply click Unlock, and then type H for head first, or T for tail first. For now, I'm going to close this dialog because my orientation is correct. Now that the analysis is complete, you can see that each pump is represented by a blue E indicator, a green R indicator, and a pump indicator in yellow, with the beginning, the end, and the duration shown. You can navigate your window using the left mouse button to pan, the right mouse button to scale, and the built-in buttons, the x-axis and the y-axis as well as the Fit Y-axis button, which will set the amplitude of the wave within your window. You can also navigate across your recording using the scrolling plot. This can give you a context as to what you're seeing in the main graph view. Below the scrolling plot, you'll see four small graphs that each indicate important information about the recording. The first of these is the EPG frequency over time plot, which shows the frequency over the entire recording time. Here you can see the frequency is pretty static throughout this recording at about 4 Hz. The pump overlay graph shows you the average waveform shape, all aligned to the E spike. Each white line represents a different pump, and the red line is the average of these pumps. The pump duration distribution graph shows a histogram of pump durations with the mode shown. The interpump interval distribution represents the time from one E to the next E and can be seen as the periodicity of the waveform. The mode is also highlighted here. There is also important information shown in the bottom left panel of the program. This includes information about the recording duration, the total number of pumps in the recording, the mean pump frequency and amplitude, as well as interesting statistics about the pump duration and interpump interval. At the bottom of the panel, you'll see some statistics about the power line noise, the baseline noise, and the mean signal to noise ratio. The power line noise represents the noise from the electronics in the lab, whereas the baseline noise is everything else. The mean signal to noise ratio is the amplitude of the points considered E or R events in contrast to the points that are not. The higher the signal to noise ratio is, the more accurate your analysis will likely be. We also recommend that you keep noise levels to a minimum. 
If noise levels are higher than ideal, the text will be shown in red, as it is in this file. In the upper right corner of the main graph, you'll see the mean pump duration and the mean EPG frequency. Both of these can be turned off using the View menu. You can also toggle off the pump indicators as well as the E and R event indicators. Additionally, we have included some keyboard shortcuts, including the P key for the pump indicators, the E key for the E event indicators, and the R key for the R event indicators. There are a couple other view options as well, including Show Cursor and Show Noise Envelope. The Show Cursor allows you to see important values about the point your mouse is currently over, including the time at the cursor, here we're just over one minute, the sample number, and we take 500 samples a second, the voltage at this point, and the signal to noise ratio value. It also includes the pump duration length if we're currently over a pump. Here, the pump is 76 milliseconds long, whereas this pump is 74 milliseconds long. You won't see a value if you're not currently over a pump. Finally, once you're done analyzing, click on Export Results to export your file to an Excel spreadsheet. Here you can choose a new name, you can browse for a new location, and you have two export type options. One is to export all the files in the currently selected folder. In order to be counted as an analyzed file, this check mark needs to be present. It will export all files with this check mark next to them and put them in the same spreadsheet. You also have an option to export only one file, the selected file. Additionally, you can choose to save raw spike times and to show the exported file right away. If you click Save Raw Spike Times, this will export the millisecond times of each E and R event to a new sheet in the workbook. Finally, click Save to save your exported file. There's one more feature I'd like to briefly touch on, and that's the Customize Analysis dialog, which you can access by clicking Customize Analysis. This will bring up two tabs of options, one for the single file you're looking at, and one for the default settings in case you want to change the factory defaults. In each, you can change the signal-to-noise ratio accepted for E events and R events, as well as the high-pass cutoff frequencies to filter both the E's and the R's. There's also a minimum absolute threshold used to determine the amplitude at which the E's and R's must meet to be considered. We also include pump parameters. This indicates that our minimum pump must be at least 30 milliseconds long, but no longer than 300 milliseconds. The time between one E and the next E must be at least 30 milliseconds to be counted as a pump. You can find more information about this dialog in our user guide. And you can access our user guide in the Help menu. As always, we'd love to hear your feedback about the software, or hear if you have any questions about how to use it. If you have any questions about the ScreenShip system in general, feel free to contact us at support at nemometrics.com. Thanks for watching.